So 22nd of December, and I am really happy to be back with the amazing Nick Alvia from Good Lion TV. I've been following your travels, Nick. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Thank you so much for asking. Yeah, so you saw that I was in Dallas recently. and uh, Yeah, you've been getting around. I saw you and my dear friend Alpa as well. It was so lovely to see her that she's made it over as well. So hi, Alpa. Um, uh -huh. Tell us before we get stuck in, because we've got lots to talk about today, and um, we, I really want to sort of um, take a guided tour around Good Lion, but can we start by talking about your travels? Because you've been in Dallas and Nashville, haven't you? I have. Yeah, Nashville was amazing. So, uh, okay, so Nashville was the um, Truth About Cancer event, and really it felt like the truth about C-19, if you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. and, um, everyone who was there was Mickey Willis, Del Bigtree, and, and we were all under one biodome in the, uh -huh. this Gaylord Opera Land Center. So it was like we were at a music, like a theme park locked in. You'd be walking around, you see Del Bigtree in his shorts. You'd be like, oh, he's going to go work out or something. It just felt so cool to be that close to, to everyone. And then Dallas, complete opposite. Everyone came and jam-packed into a church. And uh, that was the Reawaken America tour. And I went for Mel Kay. I went and filmed her backstage. Really Fantastic. Cool. So, so love Mel. Um, oh, I'm so jealous. I wish I was there seeing all those people in person and actually being able to talk to them. So, oh, who knows next year. So, um, yeah. so that experience of actually speaking to them and seeing it, was it really, really uplifting? Going to these is very uplifting. Oh, my gosh. You're around everyone who, who feels and breathes like you. Feels like family really so yeah i think everyone should try and get out to one of these because then we went to scott mckay's in santa barbara and that was like a whole nother vibe so it's yeah it's cool that people are getting up and doing something it's really really important and i saw on your live that you did which i absolutely love i i was really pleased you called out some of the negative nellies as i call them you know i'm so sick of people criticizing people who are making a living by doing such good stuff and everything because at the moment we still live in a reality where we all need money to you know provide for our daily needs and those of our loved ones and you know we all have a choice don't we Nick in terms of where we want to choose to to spend that money and we can choose to support the people that are changing the world for the better or we can choose to support the people that have got us in this mess in the first place exactly people are forgetting how how their money is actually their vote. So if you're going to vote for, you want to go buy some Coca-Cola and watch Netflix, look at what you're supporting. It's the cabal. So take a seat back and maybe review where you put your money. And, and instead of knocking people down, have value in them, build them up because they're creating the new world. This is what I love. It's so important to build them up and give them their support, emotional support, just being there with them. If you can give financial support and you're drawn to, that's really important as well. But, you know, we are responsible for what we create moving forward. And anyone who's watching these sort of shows should know better than to knock something that's doing so much good. So I, I think that's just a really important message. So talking about doing a lot of good, I am such a fan of your Good Lion TV. And last time we walked back, we talked about escaping the simulation a few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And this time I wanted to start with your um, weird history that I watched. Now I watched the first one you've got on there and I've watched it three or four times already, and I need to watch it another 10 times because I call your Good Line TV Call School. It's like the new Call cool School for everyone to just go and really learn the fun stuff that we should have all been taught in the first place. But what was your inspiration for this Weird History series? That's so sweet for you to say. That makes me feel really good, by the way. My grandparents, they, uh, they opened up a lot of universities in Chile. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it's cool because then my dad's a, a photographer, my mom's a musician, so it's kind of like I'm, I've really scooped up all their DNA and I'm doing it. But um, for weird history, when I first heard about Tartaria, it just blew me away. The fact that there could be a continent with more people than the United States that no one knows about, they're not taught about, and why. Once you realize, well, let's find out why, it, the, it just implicates so much more to the world and you go what the heck is real now 
You start questioning everything. This is why I, I so openly believe that we are in a firmament. We're in a yeah. firmament. Most people think there are, they're, well, most people think there's space out there. I don't, I don't think it's space. I think it's something else. But yeah, um, Tartaria, imagine that. If anyone hasn't seen it, I'll show you how, how to look at it on Good Lion TV. You can get a preview and just go watch it on YouTube and you get the whole thing. And then you can go to Good Lion TV if you look at it and want to see more. Uh, yeah, the technology aspect is what blew me away. How we could have wireless electricity. It makes sense that we could actually have it. But we don't really see it. And that's because it's been hidden. Once I knew about that, I had to write it. And the, the co-writer, Nick Hinton, he writes amazing threads make, uh, from just on so many topics. So we team up together and make these movies. Th there's a flavor of movies that I've, I've made that have that feel. And that's the Nick Hinton um, behind it. Like Escaping the Simulation, team worked with Nick Hinton. And same with Weird History. And then it just kind of makes a life of its own. I just love them both. And that, what really gets me is I think you've really got the balance right because you give enough information to really get people hooked, but not too much. So you leave us wanting more. <laughs> so, yeah. so much wanting more, but also really inspired to go off and start doing your own research as well, because this is the thing. I mean, the physics, the, the, the physics side of things and the energy and the, uh, the um, electromagnetism. And then you get into all the different archaeological buildings and the antennas and the metal domes and everything. Now, I'm not going to spoil it for everyone because you've <laughs> got to go watch it yourself. But there's so much packed into there. But you start to see how this is all linked in together, don't you? Oh, for sure. <clears throat> you really see uh, how the cabal has risen and where it has rose, rose from. You, it just starts with electricity because you can make everyone a slave for it when it could be free. And that seems like the perfect dream for control, control freaks, uh, criminals who end up ruling the world, that they want to control everything. And uh, that, yeah, when you see this, there's a video from the 50s. And there's someone what appears to be he's floating on a podium mm. and this podium is just moving around and some people might think it's anti-gravity, but it's not. It's actually electromagnetism and how together that can actually make it so there's no gravity and gravity is just a theory. Maybe there is no gravity at all. You know, I just think this is brilliant. I mean. A few things I want to discuss this. From my point of view, I'm absolutely passionate, have been for years, about natural health and our mind and body's ability to heal itself. And when you think, if we were to... There's so many areas this links into. So, so we know that there's a lot of research to show sound healing, for example, light healing, sound healing, and how the whole music industry has been completely manipulated to use the distorting sounds and resonances so this just links into every other life and once you start seeing these little chinks in the armor everything else starts to fall into place and it's so sad isn't it when you yeah. but it's so exciting at the same time because now the more people that share it they're not going to get away with hiding it any longer right and so to most of us we're pretty in shock that what this technology could exist and most of us aren't even you know 60 70 so there, there there was a lot of things that went on before then that we wouldn't be privy to in this case uh what you're bringing up sound waves and, and healing that is basically the way it has been for a while mm. now we're being experimented on i guess you could say um this pyramid i'm in is a stargate pyramid it's based off russian technology based basically by looking at russian architecture and seeing that there's the same angle uh, on most of their, actually all of their buildings that have something like this. So they redid it for something we could sit in. And it's just insane what they've been finding with it. You can take your blood and sample it, put um, before you get in here, you can look at it under a microscope. And then you come in here, you meditate 30 minutes, 20 minutes. Then you look at your blood and it's fantastic. It's, it's you wow. can see how more healthy it is you can do that with plants you can put plants in here and grow them it's amazing because the difference uh so the amount of research that's gone into this is just 
very similar to the world that was around then. And then trip on this. Yesterday, I spent three hours with a, a friend of mine who is doing remote body scanning. And he does it through getting a selfie. So then he sees kind of your essence and your aura, the energy around you. It's all tied into this program that's built by Russians and Germans in the 80s, once again. And then um, he'll call you from their body scan device. And you have to put your phone below your ear for about two minutes. And what it does is it picks up everything, like everything picks up everything and then does another one in, a, in an attempt to balance out what was going on before that needed balancing so that was done yesterday for me do i believe in it do it do i right now i'm just testing it out and it seems like so much has gone into it and a lot of things were accurate that were on there to to a point where the things that i wasn't aware of i'd pay more attention to yeah yeah so it's this is the world that I believe we're headed toward that we were led from and it was all hidden. That's why I think if they made up the sphere earth thing, you know, like completely warped our perception of this reality and then they can change everything from that. Yeah, and, and again, something that I talk a lot about is, you know, that the scientists try to persuade us that we've got 90% junk DNA but just by telling them that we're, we're, they're putting us, they're limiting us, they're limiting our potential, but so, supposedly. But if we were to chuck away all these rules of things that we're told we can't do and is impossible, the world is your oyster. I mean, um, you know, when you have some more kids, Nick, let's let's experiment with them and see. Right. OK, you tell that toddler that they can fly. You tell them that they can do all these things. You know, we know that the kids can talk to animals as easy as anything and talk to the trees and everything. Uh, just if we don't put those boundaries in there. I mean, with everything, we've been careful with our words today, but with everything that's going on in the current um you know, reality. I was speaking to one of my friends, David, earlier today. I must show you his music, actually. I think you, I hope you'd like some of that. It might be good for some of your future projects. Um, but, you know, you go back to V for Vendetta and how much of our lives with this current situation, with everything we're talking about there, with energy, with what our bodies are capable of, um, with what our minds are capable of, are we walking ourselves into that jail cell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love that movie, by the way, V for Vendetta. Uh, last night I put on, um, I'm going to re-release a, a Purviewood on YouTube. And the mm -hmm. one that I'm really re-releasing is Purviewood 6 Royal Flush. And that's tying in Canada, the royal family in England, and then the Vatican, and of course, DC. Um, together, mixed in with JFK Jr. and Princess Diana. And in the beginning, it's, it's, it's really just showing the scene in V for Vendetta, where Parliament's blowing up. And it's all symbolic. It's not saying go do that, but it's it's stand up. That movie's so relevant to today. It's so relevant today. And, and you know, I'm sure we can all think of, of examples ourselves where we have put ourselves in those boxes, put the stress on ourselves, put this external pressures limited ourselves I mean you've only got to see what the human body is capable of I mean you know take you take Wim Hof in one respect you take Joe Dispenser you take an Olympic gymnast you take um one of these guys who's climbed every mountain up you know I loved listening to the um what is it one yeah. of the past there you know you you can see what what a human body is capable of and then I see what I think my body is capable of I know I'm putting a lot of limitations on there that that aren't really there it is just um it's very exciting that once these shackles start coming off to see the changes that really puts into place and how quickly the everything will start to transform yeah, I wonder sometimes if this is some big, you know, comedy and they're waiting for us to come to that conclusion and the torture is just building up because it's so cruel to see what the world's going through. And I know a lot of us think, you know, there's there's a plan going on. I do believe in it, but but some at some points I'm like, hold on, this is getting a little too much. Like I'm seeing videos online of it's I can't start to describe here. Like, 
um, but it's people just getting something against their will. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's so heartbreaking. And, uh, and then seeing Trump at the uh, turning point USA. Yeah. That's such a confusing thing to, to swallow there. Some people understand it as comes. Some people understand his, what he said as uh, playing the game. Mm. And some people are like, dude, who is this? So yeah. it's yeah, really it's confusing. And the truth is, we don't know. And I think anything you can sort of twist and come up with some sort of plausible explanation. It's a bit like statistics. You can, we all know you can make statistics fit whoever's paying the bill, basically, um, their agenda. And it's a bit like that situation is, yeah, you can come up with all these scenarios and everything, but at the end of the day, until we see the real movie <laughs> that we're yeah. all part of, we're not really going to know, are we? And and I think sometimes, to me, it's a distraction as well in terms of why why do we even care what he's saying anymore? Not that I not haven't got a lot of time for him, but is this part of the lesson again? Is why why are we looking for anyone else to tell us what to do? Exactly. Exactly. And maybe that's the natural evolution that we're going to go into. I hope. I heard a wicked theory from uh, a psychic intuitive. Her name is Becky Barron. Do you know who she is? She's fucking no. cool. <laughs> well, uh, she said she goes into her, she goes in there and she does this for so many people. She's got like eight months of people just waiting to be healed. So she's like, well, I'm just going to teach you. So now she's doing a course. And uh, so she goes in her zone and she's like, "Mm, Trump was killed. And we're like, what? She's saying uh, it was was around when he got COVID. And that was October 2020. And uh, so, okay, everyone listening is like, this is, this lady's crazy. Because no one wants to believe that. No. And uh, and then it evolved. It evolved because people are like, no, dude, she's crazy. Ask her, ask her again. She comes on again. Actually, it was a private and, and I recorded it. I don't know if I've uploaded it, but this is what she saw again. She said that now here's where it gets extra crazy. She said that Trump had a clone and multiple. Now we know clones are a possibility. I don't think anyone knows for sure. Maybe someone does, but according to her, that there's a clone factory in Japan that makes um, all the celebrities clones and that Trump had about eight of them. One of them, uh, a few or a few of them are consciousness clones where it's part of your DNA uh, consciousness in it. So if it gets killed, you get killed. Supposedly the Trump that was in the hospital she saw was a clone and it caused the real one to have a heart attack. And the one that's around now is a, basically, um, this is what her words were, 99% Hillary Clinton AI and 1% Trump. Now, with that crazy lens, I try and make sense of what I see on like turning point when when Trump is saying things like what he says. I know it's far out, but who knows? (laughs) Who knows anymore, really? Oh, I feel sick now. That's (laughs) That's horrible. (laughs) I know. I felt sick, too. I I just like, oh, please don't mix those two in one. Oh, my God. Oh, that's really And here's the th- weird thing is like, there's a show called um, uh, Inside Job on Netflix. It's like an animation written by a Japanese dude. And every conspiracy theory is presented just in the first four minutes. And the wow. whole show is built around conspiracy theories, almost shoving them in our face and making fun of us or making fun of us. Or it's all predictive programming. And one of the biggest things on there is they're, they've created a robot president. <laughs> so weird. Oh, my God. I mean, you know, your thing, okay, so weird histories, your thing is truth is weird and fiction, and I think we can all agree that's true. <laughs> I Very mean, true. seriously, if we were writing this in a school essay, we'd have just got told it was ridiculous, don't make it so unbelievable, wouldn't we? Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. This is crazy. It's really, really crazy. So what are some of your other, do you want to talk us through some of your other favorites from Good Lion TV? Because there's so much stuff on there, isn't there? Just there so give people a bit of a flavor of what they can expect if they come and subscribe there. And it's so reasonable, the subscription as well. It's so. a great idea. No one's ever asked me this. This is fun. 
here, I'm going to share my screen and um, kind of walk everyone through and like explain what is the best on there. Oh, Especially yeah. if, you, if you're new to getting red pilled, if you're just waking up, if you're like, hey, what's going on with these, uh, you know, uh, uh, mandates? What's, what's up with these? And you're starting to realize the, the world's kind of twisted. Check this out. All right, so this is goodline.tv. All right, so when you come here, when you first enter in goodline.tv, there's so much on the website right now, and we're still a baby that we kind of grew really fast, that we're just still growing. So see how long that took? It was like 10 seconds. Yeah. For a lot of people, they're like, this website's down. Not really a lot of people, but I'm sure for some in the emails I've seen, just hang in there like it's 2008 <laughs> and it'll be good. Okay. So if you're going to come in here and you want to just search, just boom, type in uh, anything that you may have heard, like gates. Boom. You're going to see the three and four gates from beginnings. That's just a cool way to come back to where, where you left off. Here, if you click on Good Lion Films, you're going to see all the films that I've produced, narrated, um, made the music for. You click on it, it takes you to a channel. And so a lot of the, the buttons here are interactive. And that's where you're going to see weird history, escaping the simulation, Trump. I, yeah, I did that for Trump's birthday a few years ago. And it's a beautiful uh, assortment of from 1985 to 2020 clips of Trump in the media and how much they loved him. Oh, they loved him and they, they stroked his ego every public appearance. And then all of a sudden he runs for president and they hate him. Yeah. <laughs> Funny that, isn't it? Yeah. Pervy Wood, the nine New World Order, explains exactly why we're in the situation we're in right now. And, uh, and then Pervy Wood, nine volume two up here is uh, the story of what happened with me at the Capitol and also with the election that we recently had. So if I were to say one of my favorites that I've done right now, yeah, this is the first swamp. Okay, so pervy woods are fantastic. They're so informative. Um, that's the thing. I think pervy would eight Hall of Fate with Chris Cornell, uh, Chester Bennington, Avicii, Michael Jackson, and Anthony Bourdain. Their whole story is so deep and uh inter interweaves into each other a little bit this is going to be my christmas viewing i'm taking some time off over christmas and this is going to be i'm going to be going through all these ones that i've wanted to even the ones that i watched ages ago that i now need to re-watch with a new fresh pair of eyes i love that i love that yeah i mean there's so much information that yeah that you have a reason to watch them all over again but here's weird history and that that's the one that the series I intend to keep building and um yeah. oh it's so good do you know I think this would make the most brilliant um present for someone if you've got family members or friends who are on the verge of thinking that they might be a little bit open because there's so many different things on here and if you want to you know the weird history is a very good introduction to people um yeah. that are uh sort of just getting into it because it's getting them to question all sorts of things before they get perhaps into some of the more controversial ones so yes. I think this would be a brilliant Christmas present guys if you haven't got anything for someone yet get them a subscription to Good Lion yeah you can get it right here up at the top at gift card and on the mobile version there is a gift card on the front page as well but check it out we oh, cool. it, do, it doesn't even stop there so there's a there's a partnership I have with a very talented researcher, and he's becoming a great editor. Uh, Lion Disclosure is a, is a blend of our talents. And this guy just, if you want to learn anything about anything, like like check out the Freemasonry Exposé. There's eight episodes now about that. There's Maxima's sister. That goes into uh, Ines uh, Zorgieta and how she was killed and all these connections with Avicii. Then there's the Kate Spade series, Leather Shoes, you want to find out what happened around her murder and then there's uh, killers unknown let's let's spend five six episodes seven episodes going over uh the death of anthony bourdain and then there's fear and loathing in venezuela do you know Ghislaine maxwell had her own island 
that's kind of crazy. No one really knew that right out front of Venezuela. And there's plenty of episodes to watch on that. I believe uh, seven, eight. So this guy is just so good. And then there's CERN. CERN is probably what's creating these weird, dark energies that a lot of truthers and light workers are going through. At the end of this year, it's insane. It's like, it's not just me. <laughs> like you, you start yes. opening up and you find out it's everyone. Yeah. And so it gives me the creeps. It really does give me the creeps. Right? CERN is like really doing some, some yeah. Yeah, like tw- they're doing like the year 3000 type black magic. Yeah. And then the murder of Isaac Happy. I mean, this there's the, the collaboration and the amount of works we've done here, blind items, we've gone all over the place. So wow. that's a whole nother channel. But then, so that's all the exclusives. That's what you would be paying four bucks a month for or 40 bucks uh, a year. And, or you can do the mug club or you can be an investor. Um, but then check this out. Everything else is in categories. You've got red pill cinemas, the spiritual den, health den, and then the wealth den. Brilliant. Yeah. And so here's Screw Big Gov. He's produced a lot of my films and he does his own. He's freaking amazing. And like he gets 107 on his show every, all the time. Go so, on, like, for, for people who are just like, what is this? What, where am I? What, who are these channels? I, I don't know who We Are Anon is. Well, they do Flat Earth. Like, you'll learn everything Flat Earth with him. Mr. Truth Bomb, who's that? Everything, if you have any doubt, about where we are right now with the plan and you watch Mr. Truth Bomb, you're going to be so filled with hope. You're going to be like, all right, Trump's coming back. Mouthy Buddha, Pizzagate, all these now are free. The ones that are listed here, except for the line disclosure. So you just come here and you sign up and you can watch all this stuff. This is uh, Mr. Truth Bomb, follow the cabal, of course, season one and two, um, Mouthy Buddha, and then it just keeps going. This is the Netflix of red pills. If you want some red pills about money, boom. <laughs> red pills about health boom Wim Hof you guys got to be doing Wim Hof every day if you're not spiritual den and then yeah this is where where it's all at this is everything now so when this you want to sign up well I didn't realize you had quite this much on here I obviously haven't looked through it as thoroughly as I thought <laughs> I had so this is just amazing absolutely amazing go and, and this is how you sign up. You just subscribe here. And uh, if you become a Mug Club member, you get a Keyboard Warrior mug. We've had so many people sign up. So there's kind of takes four weeks instead of two. And uh, the thing is now, like we're going in a new direction. Um, we've, been, we've been fundraising for the next film that we're doing. And this one is different. It's not me at a desk pretty much doing research stuff. It's... Um, it's me buying like four cameras and sets of lights, productions for all next year, um, going out and interviewing uh, specific people. And <clears throat> in this film that we're doing now, it's kind of like doing what I've been doing, but now in person and, and a whistleblower, you, you, so to speak, it's not really a whistleblower. It's just someone who was so close to one of Hollywood's biggest movie directors. It was his assistant for 24 years. And we met and she saw Good Lion and she immediately felt like, I'm going to tell you everything. And what she told me, I thought, what? Do you want to make a movie about this? She said, yeah. I just thought, oh my God. Because of the implication of who it is and how far are we going to go with this? So are you going to say what you've told me? And if you do, Oh my God. Like that's how shocking it is. It's like pervy wood now coming out of the mouth of someone who was there to see it. Uh, and you're in shock because you're thinking, who the fuck is that? And then you, once you find out you, you go, Oh my God, I can't believe him. You, you wouldn't think. And the reason being is because now here's the beauty in this whole thing is not that we're coming out with this film, pointing a finger and saying you bad person. It's, it's describing the forces around them that mm. have manipulated them. And this is what happens when you rise to success. The, the cabal, they, they do try and succeed most of the time uh, to control you. Yeah. And they did that with, with this guy, with this director. And if she wasn't there in, in his life, he wouldn't have had any light in his life. 
And once they saw the light entering his life is when they scooted her out. And it's just going to be a trip. So if, if anyone, this is what we're doing now. If anyone is wanting to participate and be a producer on the films, for example, I've offered a lot of my fans and supporters um, to become producers. Their name comes up in the film. Now, there's executive producer, which is the front of the film, and then there's producer um, front, just at the end of the film. They got different prices, but this is uh, soon to be integrated with NFTs. But right now, we're, we're, not, we're not there, but let me show you what it is. This is what it's called. The fly on the wall. Hollywood is running out of secrets. <laughs> So basically, Good Lion is about to shock a lot of people. As a Good Lion TV member, we're offering you a chance to become a producer of our next film, The Fly on the Wall. So uh, as I mentioned, it's going to be different than most. But uh, maybe I'll share this link with you, and you can share that with them if Absolutely. anyone's interested. Yeah, and I know this is – and just like this happened just as I told the universe, I said, I want to do James O'Ke and and Good Lion films type of films. And then she came along and I'm thinking, oh my God. And then all of a sudden, four other people after that are like, hey, we got this, we want to do this movie. And they didn't, they didn't know what I'm doing right now. So it's, it's happened. It's like you ask and you receive. So you got to re be really careful. And so, but now I'm really, I know what I'm going to do all year next year. That's the so world exciting. So when are you going to be starting on that? Straight away in the new year? Well, now we're going to film that in about five days. We're going to go film it in five days. And there's so much to it that I can't share now, but that is yeah. like very um, mystical. It's very mystical. Yeah. I have... It's really exciting. And, and, you know, who'd have thought when you look at the journey that you've been on um, over the last sort of year, year and a half, you know, talk about a journey of ups and downs. It's quite incredible, <laughs> isn't it? I mean, you hit on that you said something really important there be careful what you wish for and this is this is really really important so what is your process for really putting it out there to the universe what have you learned over the last year that's really uh, solidified that for you um i would say over the last year i've been riding the wave of a, of a wave that was caught four years before and four years before i was deep into being a father and a, a husband living the family life which i'm not anymore we've split and um i get to see my daughter just not as much as i'd love and um so it was around that time i was also deep into a nine to five job and i i just i tricked myself into loving it i tricked myself into loving everything because that's pretty much how you do it you fake it till you make it and then you're riding a wave so i went to a up um unleash the power within Tony Robbins. Yeah. And that completely, completely just shifted me. Um, Cause before I was a, a very like a monk, I just meditated for a, lo a long time, um, maybe 10 years. And then I did the UPW and it was like, move into this direction now. And I started to visualize what it was I wanted. So visualization is really key. It feels weird at first because it's not real. And you think you're a kid imagining things. Mm. But I was imagining that I was a film director in Hollywood. And now I live in Hollywood and I am a film director. But at that time, I didn't think it was going to be such a documentary skip into it with telling the truth. I thought I was going to be writing cool sci-fi, cerebral type films, and which now I am. But now it's going into there. It was just that I remember going to this chiropractor. My ex-wife was like, we, we got to see this chiropractor. He's a manifester for people. He manifests money for people and they come all around the world to see him and they fly him around the world to, to get work done. I said, okay, fine, let's go. I don't know if I believe this. And we go and he just looks at you and you, you stand in front of him and he, he sees how you're feminine or you're masculine is out of shape. And all he does is just make him balanced. And then he, I don't know if it's the talk that he has with you afterward, but in those talks, he I, it must have been his gift because he would say, um, you're going to get where you want to go, but you just have to get rid of the idea of how you're going to get there. And now looking back, it all makes so much sense. I am where I wanted to go. There are struggles, ups and downs. Many things get in the way. It's almost like there's a, 
a spiritual police force that doesn't want this light to win and creates obstacles, but maybe just to make us stronger. Because that's what I've learned. No matter what has happened, whether it's going to jail on January 6th or for the January 6th stuff, 45 days in jail with sharks, people who had killed people, people who were going to jail for 15, 20 years I was in jail with. And I'd never been to jail before. But somehow, uh, yeah, the divorce, there was a miscarriage before that, um, almost getting raped by a pedophile in Hawaii. That was crazy. I was in his house to uh, just now all the success that has come from making these films and also just being able to go there's so many ups and downs that no matter what anything that appears like a misfortune has a fortune in it it's just how we see it and so that's really what's carried me is if i'm pissed about something i think about okay how how is this supposed to happen why how why is this happening and how is it supposed to happen for me and usually i it doesn't make sense when you're in it. You have to live a little bit. So you have to have some faith to even create that vision of that future. Yeah. I think that's such an important lesson for everyone at the moment and really good timing as well, because hopefully most people will be able to have some sort of downtime over the Christmas period where, you know, you have to take yourself out of your normal routine, don't you, Nick, to make these changes? Mm. I think sort of so much research and practical experience shows that if you're on your hamster wheel and not getting off, it's very difficult to make those changes in your life. Very much so. And I, I think it was that car accident that I had where I almost yeah. died that made me go like, wait, hold on. And because most of us are in that zombie kind of repetition where we have to do this or else we, we won't be able to eat won't be able to survive we have to because i've done it for so long and it's just a habit but once you get that moment that's why they want drugs illegal not yeah. like not like the drugs drugs but like the good the ones that were born here and not manufactured manufactured so like mushrooms um marijuana <laughs> Like those things have the ability to take you from your current frame and step back and see it from another point of view. And then that fixes everything. That's why ketamine as a depression um, cure works because it's, it's an anti-associate. It, it's, you disassociate from your body and then you can now see things differently. It's like all those neural nets, the energy that was producing the bridges from connecting just whoom, die down for a minute and you get the chance to rewire. And that's the thing. That's why I love Joe Dispenza. He talk, he's talking about rewiring with your thoughts. Exactly. Yeah. And that's it. It's so it's actually so much easier than people are led to believe because, you know, it's like if you're in a, a field and you've got really high grass and you're making that first pathway through the grass. Initially, it's hard work, even harder work through the jungle. But if you keep walking backwards and forwards it a few times, you clear the path and the path gets wider. And then that's the natural route you're going to take. And I think, you know, what, we, what we've seen over the last year and a half is that the, uh, the evil lot are very, very good at creating new habits very quickly, but not ones that serve any of us. But we've got the skills within ourselves very easily. And there's all these amazing people out there that can help us do it, like Joe Dispenza, like Wim Hof, like all sorts of other people, Tony Robbins, you name it. Um, but you've got to take that first step. You've got to want to make that change in your life, haven't you? Absolutely. If you don't want to, then there's no fuel. That was the thing at the UPW is no matter what goal you have, establish your why. Mm -hmm. Because if the why is strong, that means when you want to give up, there's going to be a reason for you to keep going. And you can create your why. Like if everything I'm doing is for my daughter, which is, there are moments where I'm like, oh, I'm over this. I'm so done. I just want to be done. And then I think about her and I'm like, mm, there's no possible way I can do that. And then I move forward. And it's just the waves. We're living on a crying planet. When you start to dig into the channel we are on, you start to see what on earth really happened. That's the name of the series. And then you start to see this is a weeping. This is a weeping planet right now. The terrain is really not where it used to be. You know, a Silicon world is what we used to live on, live in, where is 
silicon based, not carbon. Mm -hmm. So everything's the more oxygen stuck. That means we're bigger. That probably means our blood was not red. Yeah. Blue. Our skin would be blue. The gods, the Hindu gods are blue. Avatars are blue. You know? Yeah. It's a trip. We're just like riding this small little wave. When I think back before when is when we had larger entities that lived thousands of years, like we see in the Bible. You know? I know. I mean, I, I it's just there's so much to look into. I've never enjoyed learning as much as I, I've always loved learning, but I just love it at the moment because there's so many possibilities to look into and um, there's so much to create in terms of our new future, in terms of the way we want to go. And most importantly, getting rid of all this crap that we don't want anymore. I mean, uh, you know, and just literally just chucking it out right now, you know, that the current healthcare system, we all know it's a sick system and it's just... I'm not the most patient person. I'm learning to be patient, but it is oh. frustrating. What What do you think about the timelines that we're living in and, and, and how quickly do you see some of these changes and, and truths coming into yeah. general right. reality? Yeah, I feel you, by the way, on the patience thing. I'm like doing the opposite. I'm like learning to, be, I'm becoming more impatient. Uh, I've been so patient that now I'm like, oh, no, no, no. Like it's starting to get on my nerves, these things. You can see it on my post. They're a little angry. Yeah, uh, yeah just these videos I'm seeing are just, just really, uh, just they hurt when you see people against their will. Children, again, that is just, that's okay. okay. So right now the timelines that I suspect are, are, are verging. Let's say we toss that whole clone theory out of the window. Let's say that Trump is... Um, giving us clues to what we're seeing now in the future. Mm -hmm. It seems that this devolution theory, that there was a continuation of government put into play. Every time I heard Trump speak about anything about America, it felt real. And I want to like really give my intuition to, to him because I've seen a lot of other politicians and maybe Trump is a great master deceiver, but it felt real. So the plans that were put into play I believe are unfolding. There are too many red flags under this Biden administration where we see the, the podium blurred out. Why is it blurred out? Why is that something illegal you can't do? Have it shown because it's not real? Um, how come there's planes flying on top of the White House? I thought that was not a thing. Yeah, what the heck is going on here? And so when you start to see it, there are executive orders put into place to basically recruit very important people from each department of the government and then they would be the ones who were preserving the government because they knew what was going on because of xyz you can watch purview wood nine volume one and two to understand uh has to do with the election so because of all that i no one really knows how what has gone on in the battle once they made that choice to protect the government and do what they did what kind of battle is still going on? And so where are we? It seems right now that we might be heading heading toward a disclosure. It seems that way. It feels that way. It feels like that on many fronts. And it could just be a common wave of hope. But what if it was real? There's a lot of things I'm seeing about uh, Texas and Houston being the center of uh, the capital for the United States. Mm -hmm. That's one theory. Um, there's all this stuff about the nuclear codes not even being in, in Biden's hands. The winter White House in Florida, once the devolution theory is digested, which you can watch as a movie in movie form on Good Lion TV, um, Mr. Truth Bomb, he's just doing it a service. He made it a movie. Brilliant. And, uh, yeah, brilliant. And it, it just went like wildfire. The day it went out, I saw it everywhere. And so... Once you see that and you start to realize maybe maybe there, maybe this is a plan, maybe it is going through and maybe they really are trying to preserve a civil war, that, like um, to prevent a civil war, because if everything just came out like vomit and boom, this is the new world uh, and not the new world order, but the new world after mm -hmm. the order, um, there would be a lot of angry people and there would be some chaos. I don't think I don't think they want that. If there was chaos in the U.S. and another country could probably come and take over. Mm -hmm. So, right now, I'm hoping we see something happen. 
a lot of people are saying that by Christmas, we'll, I don't know, we've heard that so many times, but there's so much hype about this QFS about to go down. And it, that's a real thing. When you start to research how many times the uh, Nasara Jasara Act has been tried to be thrown into the, into the public, it, there has been a massive world event possibly mm. staged to prevent it. And in, in similar ways to debt, where we, uh, I don't know if this is around the whole world, it's seven years and the debt that you have gets wiped clean. For a, for a corporation, it's 70 years. Mm. So when you start to see when Nasara Jasara has landed, it's typically every 70 years. Mm. So every 70 years, you might have some wicked kind of world stage event happen to distract to, and to detour that from happening. And uh, so maybe now if we are in control, it would happen. There wouldn't be anything to stop it. So we can't forget when Trump went around and, and made every country uh, capitulate. I love hearing yes, I know. Yeah. I keep coming back to that. <laughs> and I, you know, as a Brit, I mean, I was wetting myself laughing when he was walking in front of the Queen. And of course, everyone was absolutely horrified because it's just not the dumb thing. And now you look back on it and you can see why. And you're just thinking that had... You know, just to swallow the embarrassment of the criticism that he got for doing it, but it was absolutely priceless, and that's just one example. But whenever I'm feeling a bit fed up, I do like to replay that clip, <laughs> and it yeah. almost makes me feel good. Right, same. The other day I did that, and I thought, man, how did I easily forget this? This is very yeah. important because so much is happening, and that's a that's a tactic they have. Fear will stress you out, and then it'll wipe a lot of your memory. Mm. And especially short term, and if we're all collectively in fear all the time or anger, then we're going to forget things. We're not going to remember how much the media hated Trump. I mean, that's hard to forget, but it's it's very most people. Yeah, we're thinking about different different things right now. We're thinking about this is what I'm hoping. I mean, you know, without we can't get into too much about this, but where they've been so successful is getting both sides to be in a fear state because m people who uh, are looking at the world through our eyes, we're really worried about what's in there and what they're doing to it. And we all know loved ones who've taken one, two, three, and things. So regardless of which side of the fence, so the people that are in ignorant bliss about that and think it's saving their lives are quite happy about that. But the people who are looking at it from our perspective are not. So whichever side of the fence you're on, they're getting you one way or the other. That we're worried about our friends and family who have had this, and the ones who have had this are worried about the ones that haven't, or are worried about the actual moronic version. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, they, you've got to hand it to them. I keep having to move my cat. I am sorry, but she's going to pull my Wi-Fi, my computer. Oh. This is Fluffy Duffy, isn't she? Fluffy Duffy, she I, is adorable. I I've would got, sneeze and, and die around her. <laughs> I've got five cats and they're all absolutely, I've got Pumpkin here with me as well. But yeah, so, you know, you've got to hands off and sort of think, you know, evil genius, really, because whichever way they've done it, they're, they're sort of, whatever side of the fence you're on, they're getting you in one way or the other and certainly getting a lot of energy put into it haven't yeah. a lot of energy put into it and it's hard not to when you're trying to persuade but perhaps people that have got children and things like that that they still might have an influence over it's hard not to put energy in those directions somehow right and then you start seeing these these influencers and these world leaders and organizational leaders like like bill gates if you go check out his latest tweet you can read right through it. You can see what they're doing. And mm -hmm. it's it, that also pissed me off yesterday. Just seeing uh, him trying to get everyone to cancel their holiday plans. Like him openly saying, I've canceled mine because oh, of it's just ridiculous. Yeah. I know. It's, it's, and then here's the thing. It's like, oh, be very alarmed because this one is going everywhere around the world, but we don't know how dangerous it is. And it's probably not as dangerous as the last one, but still be fearful. Yeah. Cancel your plans. Yeah. And it's like, come on. It's, it's almost like I don't really think there's a human with a conscious in there anymore. And it, there isn't. He's had, he, he has said that there's no proof for the human soul 
So he doesn't believe in it. Mm. Well, Which we certainly is... don't believe that he's got one. So <laughs> see, yeah. probably the only thing I'll ever agree with him on. So or it, <laughs> or whatever you want to. I do. I get a bit upset though about the poor stick all the lizards are getting. I normal lizards are quite nice, just not the human variety. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, in in the movie I'm about to release on my YouTube, it's going to be re-released with a different title. It's Preview Wood Six Royal Flush, like I mentioned before, DC, Canada, and the Vatican. Um, in it, there's David Icke when he's younger, and he's interviewing um, Arizona Wilder, and there it's this, she's this woman who's coming out and talking about how she was part of satanic rituals, and, and when she was there, it was the ones with the elites. She was grown up to be um, basically bred into it like and this there's people who have been whistleblowers of this type of stuff so mm -hmm. she's one of them and she's, with your words remember yeah exactly <laughs> right uh she, she she talked about the lizard people mm -hmm. and and how a lot of these very famous uh, actually um presidents and mm -hmm. government leaders were there and you watch her tell this and you're thinking, is she telling the truth? Like how, and, and she mentioned other, Zachariah Sitchin, she mentioned he was in there and he's the one who came up with the Anunnaki theory. Mm. And so she's saying that they were all looking at him as an outsider. So they didn't trust him because he was put in to tell these lies about our origin. Then that makes you, that spins you around again. Because he was the one who decoded the, the 30,000 Sumerian tablets that described the, the, that, I guess, origin story of planet X, Nibiru coming around earth. And then these beings, aliens, whatever, Anunnaki, Nephilim come down and started genetically breeding with the inhabitants of the earth. Then us, well, now us, we are created so that we can dig gold from the ground for them mm. to preserve the energy in their atmosphere as they would revolve around this, I think it's 12,000 year cycle around their elliptical orbit. And that's the origin story about us and why we have a bunch of junk DNA and how come um, maybe we're obsessed with gold. But now if that, if this is true, what she's saying in this video, that would imply that that was all put in as a psyop. Yeah. Which is just, yeah. And I see that. I see that too. Yeah, I'm just gutted that we didn't come for monkeys because I've always wanted to be a monkey. <laughs> <laughs> I'm still in counselling for that, I'm afraid. That shattered all yeah. my illusions. So, yes, yeah, so I was really convinced that I was half monkey. You so, did? <laughs> I think you're half cat. I think yeah. like a half cat I'll definitely go for, yeah. So, oh, my goodness. So what has Christmas got planned for you then? What are your plans for the Christmas break? I'm going to be here enjoying time with friends and loved ones and uh, and getting ready for the shoot because actually we're leaving to film the next day. And uh, yeah, we're still buying equipment and yeah, I'm excited. This is really something. I hope none of us, I, I, I we're going to be very protected along this journey because it's coming from consciousness and love. There's, there's no point in, calling out negativity like we have to be we have to like i don't this, that's the reason why i don't really want to do many pervy woods where i'm exposing these people because yeah. we want to bring love and light and not anger and hatred because that's it like that's how we create our reality the simulation your thoughts your feelings and emotions are going to add to that so slowly we'll start to see a lot of these topics exposed but with with a lighter perception and love and consciousness always coming back to awareness yeah that's so so important nick it really is because we've really got to change that because of course it has evoked a lot of anger a lot of horror um and and we've got to move past that otherwise we're never going to move forward and change our reality we're just going to keep feeding the beast which is the last thing any of us wants to do do you promise you'll come back after you've done some filming and give us an update? Absolutely. I promise. I love coming on your show. I just cannot wait. So for people to support you, Nick, we have got two main ways. Then we've got the Good Lion TV, 
-huh. and we've got the link that you're going to send me if you can send me it after there so they can go on to they become a producer because that would be a really really special way for people to support this brilliant new project of yours um so yeah if you send that i'll make sure the link as always is below the video and thank you so so much thank you so much for all you've shared with us thank you for what you're doing and thank you for bringing a new consciousness with it and reminding us again that we do have to bring love and light to it and not just stay in the blame and anger exactly and you're so welcome i look forward to coming back and i hope you have a good christmas yeah and you lots of love thanks so much nick take thank care you. Bye.